John Free is one of the great street photographers of our generation. This summer, I decided to reach out to John and request a lesson. I asked if he would be willing to share this lesson on my show, to which he agreed. So I packed my camera and headed out to California to further my own education and learn something from a great living master. This is my lesson with John Free. What can you give photography today, Ted? What can you give to yourself today? Go through that golden door. Morris standing on the threshold, waiting by the door. You go through that door and you're on a tremendous high level because you've got it in your heart now, what you're trying to do. No one knows what the product is. Oh, it's an 8 by 10 print. No, it's not. Oh, it's in a gallery. No, it's in a book. No, no, no. The product is a photograph powerful enough to emotionally affect or move the viewer in some way for having seen it. All day long, you're sweating, working for that purpose. That's what it is. Let's go to the wall. Look at all the things. Look at all the things you've got. People coming from way over there, the tracks, people going that way. What's coming? Look at every single person that you see within range. It only takes a couple of seconds to scan. Now, this guy's going to be coming up the stairs in a minute. You can run right over here and shoot this way. You can shoot down this way. Ah, and what makes it real realistic, maybe, is to shoot right through this railing. Because no one in their right mind would do that. So if you do it, it adds authenticity. He's got the thing on his shoulder. Mm -hmm. Of course, there's people in the way now, but if I could just get him. Oh, now he's got two of a kind. I think I'll go up to a vertical. No, I'll try it horizontal. I got two of a kind. And I get the horizontal, and I'm ready to say something if they, they get mad at me, and now I'm out of film. But you got to keep them alone. I wasted about two shots. I got all sand and just sand. Boom. All sand. How do you get all sand and just sand? Yeah, I did it again. And I waited for the girl's arms to go up. That's ah. how quick it is. Well, what's the story? Why would you want a kid with a drink and all alone on a beach? It would be better if it was taken from up there. Yeah. But what does it say? What does it mean? It will confuse everybody. They'll look at it and it's a mystery. Well, why? What, what am I supposed to think? A kid with, with a drink and a big expensive sand? Well, what is that? I'm confused. I don't know. You don't want to do that. I mean, I don't want to do that. I don't want to be misunderstood. So you, you try hard to imagine what the viewer is going to see when they look at this particular shot. And that guides me. But are they thinking of that when they take the picture? I think it's important. And what are you doing the picture for? Oh, yeah, you got a good point there. Well, I'm going to do it in conjunction with the article I'm writing. Okay, well, now that you thought about that, that might change the next picture you take. And I'm not saying what to do, but at least think about what your intent is and what the, what the purpose of the photograph is. What do you want to do with it? And that might help you narrow down to where you want to go. Again. my first outdoor picture on Christmas Day, 1969. 1969. My wife and I are backpacking through Europe, colder than hell. We're walking down this hitchhike and no one's coming around them. The snow is coming down so beautiful in this forest, in the Taunus Mountains. And it was gorgeous. You could hear each of these huge flakes hit the leaves. And there was nothing around. And I look up on the hill and there's a Walt Disney looking ruins of a castle. I said, hey, maybe we better get a better camera than this Instamatic. We went into Frankfurt that night and bought a used Topcon 135 millimeter, 53 millimeter lens, and it changed my life. I stayed in Ireland for three months and made some of the greatest photographs of my life. I don't know where the hell I came from. What is the idea behind it? What are you doing with the picture? What are you doing it for? You taking simple, stupid shots that any child would make? Don't you realize the power that you've got in your hands? Make it difficult. Easy ain't worth nothing. In my game, that's what I'm gonna to explain to you, is based on the work of Brisson, Frank, and Smith. My big three. They blew me out of the water. I agree with just about everything they said. I try to combine all those things that I want that they gave 
and that they wrote about and they showed us, I put that in the computer. Then I have to train my brain. The brain doesn't want you to be a photographer. The brain wants you to be a schmuck walking down the street. He doesn't know anything about photography. He doesn't want to get close to people. He's been saturated with false beliefs his whole life. Don't point, don't touch, don't get close. Don't steal those photographs, you fool. You've got no right. You've got all this suffering. Be a detective, Robert Frank said. Be a detective that's the greatest thing in the world since he hugged me. I saw him at a gallery. I went to look at his work to see how good his prints were. And there he was. No one knew him. He was an old man. I ran out and hid in the bushes. Felt like a fool. And he comes out with his wife and I, well, sorry, Robert, I gotta take your picture. Bam! I said, Robert, thank you for being there. I said, thank you for being there. I teach photography at UCLA and you're in my pocket in every class. He came over and gave me a hug. Never said a word. Yeah, 1996 right here in L.A. He's the man. about the style. Brisson's style was excellence. Excellence in craft. Excellence in execution. Excellence in showing the shot. Excellence in thinking about the shot, that he wanted to give it to you. That's a style I want. But I don't want anybody to look at my photograph and say, oh, that's a John Free because I can tell how he tilted it. Right, right. No, 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 I don't yeah. want that. The photographer is not supposed to be visible. Look at Robert Frank the Americans. He's talking to the woman in the car. He's about that far away from her, but it doesn't look like there was a photographer present. The woman doesn't even seem to notice him. That's what it is to me. The subject is important, not me. I want to present it to you. That's all. That's all it is. You start at five years old. I taught five years old photography. Completely changed everything. I brought him books. I went to Pinkles and got blank books and brought them. I said, okay, here's what you're going to do. Here's these disposable cameras. Do a day in your life. I want to see every aspect of your life. And they go home and they shoot mother at the washing dishes. And now mother is not a stick figure anymore that they drew on a piece of paper with a curly hair. Mother is a wonderful photograph smiling down at her son. Yeah. And I got pictures of me and my son teaching this 18 years ago. And the kids pasting them in the book. And after they paste the pictures in the book, they have to write about the picture. Now that causes two things, wonderful educational possibilities here. Not only do they approach the program visually, but they approach it writing about it, describing their day. They have to, but they got the picture. Oh yeah, mom was washing dishes, and she looked down at me, and it was fun. Boom. Now you've done two wonderful things for that child. You've connected writing to taking the picture and loving his mother and putting it together and presenting it to someone else in a book, all at the age of five years old. Magical life. And this camera strap pulls me to wonderful places. And it will pull you if you have the gladness in your heart and that smile. And do it with that right intent. Sit on that rock. So what did John say? And what's the best area of photography I can go in? And take it from there. Yeah, I Thank you.